In this video, we'll explore some other properties of functions and their graphs, and we want to determine intervals where a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. We've already explored this dealing with lines, right? We have a line with a positive slope. We say from left to right that line is going up or it's increasing. And if the slope is decreasing, we said that the line was going down from left to right. And if the slope was zero, the line doesn't rise or fall, it is constant, right? It's horizontal. So we'll look at these in more detail, just pertaining them to any type of function. So a function is increasing. If the y values increase as the x values increase, this means that the graph is rising as we move from left to right. Now I'll have an example of a line on the screen where we have the points x1 and x2 labeled on the x-axis where x2 is to the right of x1 and notice that the point x1 f of x1 and x2 f of x2 are on the graph but the y value of the second point is above the y value of the first point. So that is as we go from left to right the graph is going up. So we said that a function is increasing on an interval a to b if f of x sub 1 is less than f of x sub 2 for all x1 and x2 in the interval a to b whenever x1 is less than x2. Decreasing is just the opposite. A function is decreasing if the y values decrease as the x values increase. So this means that the graph is falling as we move from left to right. So again, I have a case of a line where we have this point x1, f of x1, and x2, f of x2. But notice that the y value of the second point is below the y value of the first point. And so that y value is decreasing. Precisely, we state this, that a function is decreasing on an interval a to b if f of x sub 1 is greater than f of x sub 2 for all x1 and x2 in the interval a to b whenever x1 is less than x2. We could also state that as f of x2 is less than f of x sub 1. Right, as we go to the right, the y values are decreasing. And then a function is constant if the y values remain constant as the x values increase. This means that the graph is horizontal as we move from left to right. So if we have this line going through y is equal to c, and we have these two points x1 f of x1 and x2 f of x2 on the graph, but note that the two y values of those points is the same, it's the same value c. So there was no change in the y values. The function is constant on an interval a to b if f of x sub 1 is equal to f of x sub 2 for all x1, x2 in the interval a to b whenever x1 is less than x2. So what you'll need to do is, given a graph, determine the intervals where the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. So I have this piecewise defined function actually on the screen. Some points that this goes through are, let's approximate this, negative 6, 2. It's almost through negative 4.50 and then at negative 3, negative 2. So that's one part of a line. And then from negative 3, 2, it goes through negative 2, negative 2, negative 1, negative 2, 
0, negative 2, and 2, negative 2. And then at 2, negative 2, the third piece is going to go up through, it looks like 4.80, but another point on the graph is 6, 1. So this third piece is a part of a line that goes from 2, negative 2 up to 6, 1, and then continues to the right through that. So think about if I were to take my hand and run it on the graph from left to right, notice that it's first going down, and then between the negative 3, negative 2, and 2, negative 2, it's horizontal. And then from the 2, negative 2 to the 6, 1, the graph is going up. So we see where the graph is decreasing, then constant, and then increasing. So to answer this question, we have to state intervals of x for which that is happening on. And so I like to think about draw a vertical line where it changed from decreasing to constant to increasing. And so if we draw this vertical line through this point, negative 3, negative 2, and then if we draw another vertical line through this 2, negative 2, that's where it was, horizontal, but then went to increasing. And so then state which intervals of x the graph is doing these different things on. So on the first piece, that is to the left of the negative 3, it was decreasing. And so we state that interval. So we say it's decreasing on parentheses negative infinity comma negative 3. And then we put a parentheses. We never use a solid bracket with increasing, decreasing, and constant. So it's decreasing from negative infinity to negative 3. So these are x intervals. And then what happened between the x value of negative 3 and the x value of 2? It was constant. So we say it's constant on parentheses negative 3 to 2. And then to the right of 2, it was increasing or going up. So we say that's increasing on parentheses 2 to infinity. Now, the last objective in this section was to determine maximum and minimum values of a function. So the maximum and minimum value refers to the largest or smallest y value of all the points on the graph. So we're thinking about what's the largest or smallest output on this graph. In this function, I have the graph of a parabola that opens down. It goes through the intercepts of negative 1, 0, and 3, 0 on the x-axis, 0, 3 on the y-axis, and it has a vertex at 1, 4. So notice that this 1, 4 is the peak of this graph, and so the 1, 4 is the highest point on the graph. We say that 4 is the largest of all the output values, so 4 is called the absolute maximum of the function. The x value 1 denotes where the maximum value occurs. It is not the maximum value. So the maximum value has to be the y value or the min, depending on where it is. So not all functions have an absolute maximum or an absolute minimum, although they may have a largest or smallest y value within an area. And so we call these relative maximum or minimum points. The point where a function changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa is called a turning point. And a turning point is where we find a relative maximum or relative minimum value. These are highest or lowest points relative to the points around it. So I have this graph that it starts up in the first quadrant and it comes down through the x-axis to a point a, B in the fourth quadrant. 
Then it goes back up to cross the x-axis to another point, CD, which is in the first quadrant. And then it turns and goes down. So notice that my graph was decreasing to this point AB. Then it turned to increasing to this point CD. And then it turned and went back down. And so there's not an absolute max or min because a graph goes from negative infinity to infinity. So there's no absolute largest or smallest y value on this graph. But within these regions, we see kind of these peaks. And so where these peaks are are where we have relative maxima or minima. So this lowest point, AB is the lowest point in this area, and we say that the relative minimum is this y value of B. This point CD is the highest point in this area, so we say that its relative maximum is D. Now I have another function that it starts down in the third quadrant, and it goes between the negative 1 and negative 2 on the x-axis up to a point of negative 0 0.86, 1.58. Then it goes down through the origin to the point 0 0.75, negative 1.05. Then it comes back up and crosses the x-axis and goes all the way up to 3.12, 6.37. And then it turns down through the point 4, 0 and continues down. So notice that there are three turning points on this graph. Two of them occur at like peaks of the graph, right, mountaintops. And then the other one is a valley or low point on the graph. And so we say that there are two relative maxima, and those are the y values at these peaks, this 1.58 and 6.37. This negative 1.05 is a y value of the low point, so we say that it is a relative minimum. So a function f has a relative or local maximum at x equals b, if there is an interval a to c where b is between a and c such that f of x is less than or equal to f of b for any x in the interval a to c. So in other words, that's saying that it's saying at this point b, f of b is some peak and this value of f of b is higher than all of the other y values around it. So f of b is considered a relative or local max. A relative minimum at x equals b exists in an interval a to c if f of x is greater than or equal to f of b for any x in that interval. So this corresponds to this valley in our graph. So if we have this point b f of b, then the f of b is the relative minimum because it's the lowest point of all the points around it. So you'll be given a graph and you're going to determine the relative maxima or minima of the function. In a later section we'll actually learn how to do this on the calculator. But I have a graph that starts in quadrant 3 it goes very close to the negative 2, 0, but it goes up to the point negative 1.15, 3.08, down through the origin to the point 1.15, negative 3.08. Then it turns back up and goes through 2, 0 and continues upward. So notice that there are two turning points in our graph, and we have a peak and a valley. This means that we have a relative maximum at 3.08 and the graph has a relative minimum of negative 3.08. So the x value of negative 1.15 is where the relative max occurs. The x value of 1.15 is where the relative minimum occurs.